Hi guys, Marcus here and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update September 8th, 2020. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday and this is episode 279. Now, Because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, click CC for English subs. I create them myself. In this episode, more sales on military pictures and six dramas that haven't premiered despite wrapping filming ages ago. But as always, we begin with what's premiered recently. To Dear Myself is a modern drama starring Cecilia Liu and Zhu Yilong and it premiered yesterday, September 7th. The female-centric drama follows three women played by Cecilia Liu, Ari Khan and Chen Michi and delves into their troubled romances and careers. Their male counterparts are played by Zhu Yilong, Peng Guanying and Li Zifeng. This is Cecilia Liu's comeback drama since her pregnancy hiatus and she couldn't have picked a better leading man than Zhu Yilong at the moment. Zhu Yilong has been topping drama actor charts with his recent hit drama Reunion The Sound of the Providence. To Dear Myself is available on YouTube with English subs and no overdubbing, we get to hear the actors actual voices which is a real plus for me. And to stick with Zhu Yilong a little more, he recently wrapped filming The Rebel. The Rebel is an upcoming Republican-era drama starring Zhu Yilong and Tong Yao and they wrapped filming on August 31st. Zhu Yilong's most memorable roles for me have been in the story of Minglan with Xiao Li Ying and then before that in Guardian with Bai Yu. And before I get to the next story, I just want to share some behind the scenes clips from Love and Redemption. If you guys ever wondered how they filmed those scenes with the beautiful computer generated scenery, well this is what it looks like in the studio. It's all green in this green screen studio. Even the guys moving the props are wrapped in green. That actually looks like so much fun. Personally, I love the movie making process, always have. And speaking of onset pictures, here are some featuring Xiao Zhan. I think at this point the consensus is that he is filming a new military drama. This is one of the few pictures that have surfaced recently to fuel that belief. There hasn't been an official announcement from the drama or Xiao Zhan, so anything that gets mentioned at the moment is just conjecture. What we can deduce though is that it is a military show and that Johnny Huang is in it too as he was in one of the pictures. Here's one of the latest pictures. Xiao Chan sports military gear and a new short haircut. He holds an umbrella while getting touch-ups from a crew member. This reminds me of a video I did back in May in which I talked about these pictures. Three pictures taken on different occasions earlier in Xiao Chan's career. And my point in that segment was that I was impressed that he was holding the umbrella by himself. A small gesture of humility that can go a long way in the film industry. Having been on many film sets, I can attest that's not something I see all the time. In fact, what I do see a lot are wardrobe people or assistants holding umbrellas for the stars while they're on their phones. This is another picture that's been floating around. He's working a rifle here. So the rumored Chinese title for this drama is Yingxiong Xu Yue Zhi Wang Pai Bu Dui, which roughly translates to Age of Heroes Ace Force. Again, that's not confirmed, but I'll stay with the story and keep you guys updated. As far as Xiao Zhan's two upcoming dramas, The Oath of Love and The Wolf, there's no official word of their premieres yet. I'm keeping my eyes peeled for those and will update you guys on those as well. And speaking of dramas that are taking forever to premiere, here's a list of some that haven't premiered despite rapping ages ago. Braveness of the Ming is a costume drama starring Zhang Han and Park Ming Young, and it wrapped filming in 2015. So I spoke about Braveness of the Ming a few episodes ago. It follows a common man played by Zhang Han who stands up for the common people and overthrows a brutal emperor during the Ming Dynasty. Word on the street is that it was permanently shelved because of the Korean wave ban in 2016. Simply put, in 2016, China banned Korean dramas, movies, and music because of a diplomatic row with Korea. The female lead in Braveness of the Ming, Park Min Young, is Korean and therefore the drama got shelved. The ban has since been somewhat lifted but still no sign of the drama seeing the light of day. It is an unfortunate casualty of politics. 
And another unfortunate casualty of politics is Jade Lovers. Jade Lovers is a Republican-era drama starring Lee Jong-suk and Zheng Shuang, and it wrapped filming in 2016. Zheng Shuang plays the daughter of a wealthy family that's going bankrupt, while Lee Jong-suk plays a kind-hearted businessman who helps her. Jade Lovers has also been indefinitely shelved for the same reasons as Braveness of the Ming. Dancing in the Storm is a modern drama starring William Chan and Guni Naja, and it wrapped filming in 2018. It follows William's character, an information security company employee who is framed when he discovers some of the company's shady dealings. Although Dancing in the Storm hasn't seen the light of day yet, there are rumors that it will this year. Reportedly, it's already secured sales to the tune of 85 million US dollars. That's quite a big chunk of change. We'll see if the premiere materializes. Zhao Ge is a costume drama starring Zhang Zihan and Wu Qingyan, and it wrapped filming in 2017. The story revolves around the wars between the Shang and Zhou dynasties. Zhang Zihan plays the king of Western Zhou. He has broad vision and fights for the people of his land. Wu Qingyan plays the king of Shang's favorite consort. She has a hand in the eventual downfall of the king of Shang. This is another costume drama that many have been waiting for. It's been almost four years since it's wrapped and still no word of her premiere. I don't know why, but if I had to guess, I would say it's got something to do with historical inaccuracies or inappropriate themes or something else to that effect that just makes you shake your head. The Faded General is a costume drama starring Zhang Ruoyun and Rachel Mao and it wrapped filming in 2016. Zhang Ruoyun stars as Huo Qibing, a lowly maid's illegitimate son who rises to become a celebrated warrior and one of the most distinguished generals in history. Rachel Mao stars as a lowly maid who becomes Huo Qibing's trusted confidant. This drama looks like it's right up my alley. It checks all the right boxes, heroic lead, inspiring story, and plenty of action. That said, I don't think it will ever premiere. Last I read, it was shelved because regulators feared that it would incite friction between Han Chinese and other ethnic groups. That sounds ridiculous to me, and I'm not sure if it's actually true, but I wouldn't be surprised if it is. Tears in Heaven is a modern drama starring Shan Do and Li Qing, and they wrapped filming in 2017. It follows a company president played by Shan Do who meets an entertainment reporter played by Li Qing. They are at loggerheads in the beginning, but fall in love later. Just standard operating procedure for the rich CEO meets working class girl trope. I'm not sure what's holding up the drama's release. I'm sure Sean Do's fans can't wait for it. Sean's had quite a few modern dramas recently. In fact, his last three have all been modern. His last costume drama was 2017's Tribes and Empires Storm of Prophecy, a drama that had so much potential but its ending was such a letdown. He has another costume drama, The Legend of Xiao Chuo, with Tiffany Tang coming up. That should be a good one. So that's just six dramas that I mentioned. There are just a portion of the many dramas that are awaiting a release date that may or may not come, depending on the regulators. There are many more like Douluo Continent and Private Shushan College, and the list goes on. It can be frustrating for fans, especially because there's rarely any official word as to why a drama has been shelved. But that's just the way things work in the Middle Kingdom. And that's it for this episode. If you want to check out the t-shirt or other Chinese drama merchandise, the link to it is in the description below. This show would not be possible without your support, so I thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed it, do subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification button for more updates. If you'd like to contribute, check out my Patreon page where for a dollar or more a month, I'll answer one of your questions at the end of one of my YouTube episodes. So stay safe and as always, I wish you clear blue skies, good health and happiness. Until next time, cheers!